hope my screen is visible welcome you all once again uh, for this uh, lecture where we are taking up the the other three loop statements in verilog the um, totally four the first being while for forever and repeat so while loop is uh, already done we have understood it how it works and all and we also understood where it where should we use these loop statements and very strictly i had given some recommendations or points to remember here right points to remember wherein i just said that loop statements are normally used in stimulus block it's key point to remember and it is recommended to avoid loop statements in the design block because it will give rise to the unoptimized design fine so these are the two uh, points to remember things i had said and which you don't find in book the same statements you will not find in the book uh, these statements i'm telling it by my experience okay then uh, we saw around two examples on while statements and we also uh, could able to understand it through xilinx in this session we begin with the loop statements for the keyword used for for loop is for itself all small case it contains three parts as in the case of c programming an initial condition a check to see if the terminating condition is true a procedural assignment to change a value of the control variable so here if i name it as 1 2 so the first space occupies here in the for loops bracket after that the first place is occupied by the initial condition second key, second place is occupied by a conditional check we also call it as terminating condition this is initial condition remember this is terminating condition and this is a control variable we call it as a control count is a control variable and which controls how many times or uh, what are the, the incrementing of the initial condition till it reaches the terminal condition so this is the third one this is how the for loop for loop is made up of same thing same structure you find it in c program also only thing is there is minor difference in writing in the in the way of writing i can say syntactical variations you can observe functionality remains same okay so here what we are doing is we are just counting uh, this this is a counter this is a counter which counts from which counts from 10 1, 1 127 because terminating condition is 128 so 128 it will not enter the loop so 127 is the point where it stops so it is display will not uh, work so when 128 is reached so count is 10 to 127 so what happens here it goes like this this is like initialization i initialized it this is like a condition till which this loop statement should execute this is the control variable and what actually you are doing you are displaying the count that is percentage d whenever this for loop is entered it starts from zero checks its termination condition so this will execute and zero will be printed and next before it was it will it proceeds with a condition check it would have incremented so count plus 1 so now count is 1 so count is 1 is following terminating condition so it executes again so count will be printing 1 like that it counts till 126 and 127 so think that now 127 is printed 127 plus 1 is 128 so now the count value is 128 it will check if 128 is less than 128 it fails so when it fails it will come out of the loop that's it it does not execute the display command so 0 to 127 is the output for this this is loop statements a for loop statement so now let me take an example initialize an array or memory so 
we shall take one task for us. Or uh, what we do is we have a memory. Memory means it's like a racks uh, in your room where you keep books, right? You'll be having racks, and the memory racks will be looking in this fashion, not as attractive as you have the racks in your rooms. Okay, just for illustrations. So this is uh, zero from zero till maximum states. Max state minus one means zero till thirty-two minus one is thirty-one. So this is the number of locations that exists. And here my task is initialize all even locations with zero. Next task is initialize all odd locations with one. If I go on writing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it proceeds. This is 31. This is 30, right? So I I just uh, uh, just take here. The contents to be filled with black are odd locations. So all uh, even locations. Let me take even. Even locations start with zero. Let me take zero also as even location. Okay, zero, two, four, like that. All the even locations should be initialized with what? It should be initialized with zero. So this should be initialized with zero. This should be initialized with zero. 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 So 30 is an even number, right? Zero. Like that 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 and goes on. All those locations have been initialized, initialized with zero. Now similarly, you check for all odd locations odd location should be initialized with one so odd location this is odd location and this is odd location all these odd locations 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 15 17 19 and so on right all these locations should be initialized with one so this is the task in front of us now i want to do i want to do this process with a very low coding with little energy or with little scripts fine so to do so i and it's repetition right zero is repeating in every even locations and one is also so there is a form of repetition so whenever there is you find that some same thing is repeating again and again there is a scope of usage of these loop statements i find for loop is a right one to be used here so how i make use of it you just have a check tick define is a compiler directive max states is a variable i'm using to define a compiler directive 32 is a constant i'm assigning to the max states means wherever in your code max underscore states appear it will be replaced with 32 by the compiler okay that's the meaning why i'm doing so think that you write a code a very book, big code wherein you have take the refer you have taken the reference of 32 in many places now what if if i say what if if I say I want the max states to be 64? Everywhere in your code, you should go on uh, changing the 32 with 64. Rather, what we do is we change this. We write a compiler directory in this fashion. Wherever I am supposed to write 32, I write it max states because while executing, compiler will make that correction or make that uh, arrangements or adjustments. Wherever max states is observed, 32 will get replaced. So with that, I start writing code. So integer state is an integer variable. Now I'm defining an array. See here, stay in between the data type and the variable. If the uh, bit specification, bit width specification comes, then it's a register, multi-bit register or vector declaration. Now here, what is happening is this is data data type. This is a variable, and here it is coming. The bit width specification is coming after that. So it is an array. Remember, this is an integer array of how many elements? 0 to max state is replaced with 32. So 32 minus 1 is 31. 0 to 31. It's as good as defining integer state. It is as good as defining integer state 0 to 0 up to 31. This is as good as uh, writing in this way. Okay. So integer i is one more thing I want to define. Initial begin 
first for statement to initialize all the even locations initially i want to uh, start the index in this is i value okay the address locations it will point as i value i is equal to 0 1 2 till 30 1 or 32 it is possible because i i have not defined any it, it can go up to uh, 32 bits 2 raised to 32 so till that it, the range is there so let us not worry so 0 is a first initialization for this loop i should be less than 32 that's a terminating condition so here 32 this 32 and this 32 can should have been replaced with max underscore states because if i change this to 64 here it remains same so um, that small correction you make it at your end itself okay so if i want to make make it 64 here also 64 it changes and here also 60 to 64 it changes okay if i just write the number itself then it does not happen so so uh, to make best use of this compiler directive i have made this change let us assume 32 in this case so how many times it executes 0 to 31 because once i is 32 it fails so it increments by two times this is a control variable or control uh, thing or element i can say so control element is incrementing by two times so zero first and it checks it is following the condition state zero i is replaced with whatever its current value zero state zero is equal to zero this is state zero is equal to zero now again next it will increment by 2 i is equal to 2 2 is uh, i mean accepting or holding to be true uh, with a ter terminating condition so, so state of 2 is also 0 state then 4 state of 4 is also 0 state of 6 state of 8 state of 30 state of 30 is also following the condition state of 30 is 0 then 30 plus 2 is 32 so nama is equal to 32 32 less than 32 it, is, it fails it will come out of the loop now it takes the initialization of all odd locations i am starting with one so when one is following the condition state one is equal to one state one is equal to one i increments by two times i is equal to three now three less than 32 so uh, uh, state of three is increment uh, i mean state of three is allotted with one like that seven uh, and it continues till 31 so we think that i reach 31 so 31 is following this condition state of 31 is equal to 1 31 is equal to 1 now what happens so it increments by 2 again 33 i is equal to 33 less than 32 it fails so it will come out of the loop it will complete the process so this is how the initialization of odd and even locations are done so the name of this memory allocations have been given uh, is been given as state state of 0 is this state of 1 state of 2 state of 3 it's been given like this if i want to access this particular memory location i write it as state of 30 this is how i access this particular location okay i hope the things are clear now so before we go to the repeat statement let me just uh, take you to the xilinx environment to show the simulation of the for for loop okay so i have a for loop code module counter i have uh, taken a module counter because the first example is a counter right click new source uh, counter name is not given okay counter using for loop it is next 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 I just copied it this is the first example that we discussed for the for loop like uh, up till 0 to 127 it should execute so, so directly simulation because uh, uh, it is not having any inputs and outputs directly i'll go for the simulation click on counter simulate behavioral model and save it before you run okay so this is uh, the first uh, first example for the for, for loop statement the second example is uh, the illustration of i mean the uh, initialization of even location and odd locations okay so that i'll take so let me see if uh, it executes properly so i sim simulator has got here radix i'll change it to unsigned decimal so that it can be readable so yeah you can see here 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 till till yeah till 127 as soon as it reaches 128 the it will terminate 
it will terminate it does not display see a display command has printed here starting from count is equal to 0 so till 27 because 28 comes to the count but it 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 will come out of the for loop hence it will not display that count equal to 128 so this is a simulation for the first example of the for loop now we'll go for the second example so in the second example of the for loop the name i have given is uh, module name is here uh, for loop uh, let me take that itself for loop example okay so implementation right click new source very log module this is the file name i'm giving next next finish so i'll copy this code i'll paste it here same code no change at all same code save it simulation for loop example simulate behavioral model there is no change everything is same let us see if or even locations are initialized to zero and all odd locations are initialized with one that is what is a checking point for us so simulation is uh, on uh, i'll change the radix to unsigned in, uh, decimal so that it is readable you can see here okay so all uh, the locations that it reads you can see here 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 and this is how the location have been put um, individually if i want to show it each array um, one second i'll check i'll just check, uh, take all this few and i'll change it radix so that it is readable okay you can see here this is an array right array of 32 elements each element i'm showing it's a zeroth element is initialized to zero that is even this is even this is even this is even see here six eight nine all uh, eight ten all these are initialized to zero whereas odd numbers one three five all these are initialized to one so this is how the my memory is initialized using for loop okay so i hope uh, the things are clear now the concept is clear now we shall go to the next one the next loop statement of a focus is repeat so repeat is the name itself says that it repeats up till some fixed number of times so the keyword used uh, for the repeat loop statement is repeat itself in the small case the repeat constructs executes the loop a fixed number of times remember this a fixed number of times while a loop executes until the condition is true which is uh, written in terms of conditional we say conditional check even for loop wherein you are checking for the terminating condition in repeat unlike all the previous to the formal two in the repeat it is fixed number of times it executes it does, it does not check any condition the repeat construct cannot be used to loop on a general logical expression like in the for loop and while loop up till this condition is satisfied you have to execute certain statement so that is not possible using repeat so in repeat it is like fixed already for example see look at this increment and display count from 0 to 127 integers so here i don't have the possibility to check for certain condition so what i do is I take certain things and I execute it for 128 times. So very simple. So what I do is integer count is a variable. I initialize integer variable, initial begin. So I initialize it to zero. I prefer using repeat statement, which will execute for 128 number of times. So I begin it. So what is that which should execute for 128 times? That is the display command and the count increment. So display command, displays the count value and soon after displaying it will increment and again 128 times it has to repeat for example from 0 it starts 0 is printed 0 plus 1 is 1 again 1 is printed 1 plus 1 is 2 again 2 is printed 2 plus 1 is 3 so it like that it continues for 128 number of times so this is how the repeat statement executes so before going to the next statement let me just take it to the xilinx so to show it 
for is done now I'll take repeat so repeat statement again the counter here the name has been given as counter let me change uh, the name to counter one okay or else uh, I'll take the counter itself okay here itself I'll just uh, copy it for is already done let me just use this okay repeat statement is here same code save it simulation or select the counter simulate behavioral model rather than going for new uh, source file I have just replaced the for loop code with a repeat code just to save time yeah you can see here I'll change the radix to unsigned decimal zoom to fit and here if I just run it you can see here 123, 124, 127, 128. Soon after 128, it will come out of the loop. So this is a simulation which is exactly behaving as your. Uh, let me exit it. So it will exactly behaving as if your for loop is used. Okay. So here, this repeat statement will just come out after executing for 128 times without checking for any condition. It will don't worry for any condition. What's account value? Nothing. You have to decide like how many times it should execute. That's it. Very simple. Okay. So let me take one more example because it's being the very easy example. So to convince you, I, I feel like one more example is necessary. Let me take it first. And then I'll explain. So what is the name given to it? Data underscore buffer. Okay. So data underscore buffer is a name given. So let me just uh, open a new source, very long module, data underscore buffer. Next, finish. I'll just copy down the code. So let me explain it first. So data underscore buffer has the following ports, data start, data clock. And I am defining a parameter cycles equal to eight. Why I define the parameter? It you can see that you can you can use this parameter analogous to the compiler directive, but it is not a compiler directive. It's a it's within the design block. Wherever cycles come, it will directly display replace it with eight. So even this method parameters are most frequently used than uh, the compiler directives. Okay. So wherever cycles comes, it is uh, treated as eight. That's it. You remember that. Input data start, input data, input clock. All are inputs. Okay. What is the output? So output is some memory. We will see here. What is this? You read it. This is a register array, array of a eight arrays you have eight elements in this array that is starting from 0 to 7 totally eight array elements you, ha you are having each array element is of 16 bits for example buffer 0 buffer 1 buffer 2 buffer still buffer 7 total seven elements buffer 0 is made up of it's it's a 16 bit register buffer 1 is a 15 bit register Buffer 3 is a 16-bit register, like that it goes on. Integer i, always at positive of the clock. What is happening? Let us check. If data start is 1, if I don't mention anything here, it's, it's, it is uh, like if it is 1, then you should begin. i is set to 0. Repeat cycles means repeat statement executes for eight number of times because cycle is nothing but eight eight number of times what it should do it should store a data at the positive edge of next eight clock cycle that's the meaning see how pause edge of the clock is already verified in the always statement i'm checking if data start is one or what data start is one so i proceeded here so here it is said that repeat statement should be executed eight number of times so what is happening here at the pause edge of the again I am checking the uh, positive edge at the pause edge of the clock I want to run 
the buffer statement uh, I, am, I am assigning the data to the buffer values or elements I am assigning here I am incrementing it so again buffer changes are from 0 to 1 so that element will be transferred with the data so this data is a new data so whatever data I want to assign so here is the input whatever you want to assign that data will be assigned so I think again I need to write the uh, you know stimulus block for this I think it will take time let me see what is the name given to this data buffer so this is having inputs and outputs so I have to um, say, say I mean check syntax it what is the name data buffer save it and run it of course we don't have output here we want to show just how it help how, how it helps us okay how it is helping each element of this buffer is getting the value of I mean I'm storing the value to each of these elements of the array the new data when during the positive edge how many number of times eight number of times because I have eight arrays simulation data buffer simulate behavioral model Let me just, yeah, here, did I initialize anything here? Yeah, I have any cycles, let it be. So here what I do is, here the input is uh, here, let me start data start force constant one. Let me keep this data start as one. Let me force the data as let me force the data as in terms of binary it is uh, it is 16 bit so I keep it as unsigned let me force the data as 15 okay 15 is a data I'm forcing let me give the clock clock is uh, leading at 0 leading is 1 this is 1 microsecond 1 microsecond so click on okay these are my inputs okay so let me run it then run for the specified time zoom to fit so here you can see data and buffer all these things let me set to radix unsigned decimal to check okay so let me run it you can see here uh, 15 is a data I forced during the positive edge first positive edge during the first positive edge repeats uh, it will enter the always block a repeat statement executes and within the repeat statement I have a command like within the repeat statements it is executing eight times I have a command like at positive edge only again I have to wait for positive edge positive edge has already occurred I have entered here I have checked this uh, data state and all repeat statement executed it, it is within this loop now it will execute eight number of times but here again I'm checking for the positive edge of the clock to assign the data value to the buffer so that's why it will wait for next positive edge here here is the next positive edge here it is assigning the 15 value you can see I expand this array this is a zeroth a buffer of zero zeroth element first element you can see here this also I'll just uh, change the radix to radix to unsigned decimal each of the element is of 15 I um, mean uh, yeah 16 bits okay now I change this data variable to 120 okay let me see what happens run it run it see here, 120 so 120 first element is also taken as element 120 this is also taken as 120 now I'll change the data element to force constant 250 now see the so third and fourth element so third element 250 now I change it to again so whatever value you want to force you can force it I want to uh, force 10 
run it so that comes over here so if I just run it the same 10 will uh, go on coming here so yeah all the data array elements I placed it here now it will come out of the repeat loop and that's it so it, it has come out of the repeat loop so this is the simulation of uh, the repeat statement with some somewhat increased complexity in the code because the previous code was very simple so I uh, thought to take this now we shall go to the next one forever and the last loop statement it's been the last loop statement so what is this forever loop statement is the keyword used is forever the loop statement does not contain any expression same as repeat statement but what is the change in repeat statement you have some fixed number of number of times it was executing whereas wherever forever executes forever it executes forever that's how the name has come then there should be some stopping uh, condition right it def definitely does not have a stopping condition but it is it is sensitive to the system tasks that is until a finish dollar symbol finish system task encounters it will execute or is there is one more thing called disable statement so this uh, we will uh, explore in the next session okay so when these two things encounters then only forever statements can be terminated so this is a forever statement quite simple let me see here clock generation i want to i want to have a clock generation for example this is a clock generation this is a single clock i want to continue it forever forever i want to continue it okay until that these two things encounters okay so what i do is reg clock because it is a single bit initial begin end so here what i'm doing i'm initializing clock to zero forever loop statement after every 10 time minutes i want clock to invert itself so clock with a period so 10 this is uh, for 10 time minutes it will remain zero next 10 time minutes it will remain uh, remain one so total period is 20 so period is 20 so this is a clock generation so let me just take that uh, code of forever in the xilinx okay so let me check it so repeat is done forever clock gen is a name given so let me take the same name implementation right click new source very log module clock generation so let me take the clock generation so i'll copy the same code that i have just now discussed only thing is i just add module to it and declare uh, whatever in, in you know end module see here the only change i made is in in the slide that i shown i did not add a module name because what is important that i'm fo focusing in the slides okay from here to here i explained it already so forever i have used so I have to have some stopping point right terminating point so that's why I initialized one more thing and after one lakh uh, time units uh, I want to come to the finish terminate this so save it simulation because directly simulation does not uh, have any clock generation right it is clock generation simulate behavioral model okay so it will generate the clock signal for the time one lakh time minutes so one clock period is 20 nanoseconds one time minute is one nanoseconds one lakh divided by 20 20 uh, you know that, so that will give you one lakh divided by 20 that will give you number of clock cycles it generates so, yeah. so it has got generated so many number of clock cycles thousand nanoseconds so these many number of clock cycles or clocks it has got generated so it terminates at this place terminates at this place okay uh, so this is how the code is uh, working let me exit it so this is a easier example that i took let me take one more example synchronize synchronize is one more example that i want to take for explaining the forever statement right click new source very log module synchronize let me copy down this code also it 
let me explain this code the last code of the loop statement so let me save it it's also just for simulation here reg clock register x and y what is our intention here here i want to synchronize the two register values at every posit of the clock so what i what i want to do is x and y are two registers i want to synchronize the values of these two things at every posit means whenever posit appears y and x value should be same that's a meaning it may vary until the posit appears but once the posit of the clock appears x and y should settle down to the same value that is what is the synchronization of the two registers so what i am doing here initial begin so clock is set to 0 x is set to 0 y is set to initially it has been synchronized now uh, i have declared also the when it should be completed terminated here it comes always statement so clock generation with always block also you can do with the forever also you can do so uh, the clock generation it is clock is generated now i am i want to define something here so y is changing its logic or inverting itself at every 11 time minutes after every every 11 time minutes and here i am writing the actual logic what i am doing is initial forever is a loop statement so whenever this loop statement is entered at every posit of the clock what i am doing is i am adjusting the x value to the current value of the y whatever y value is there just adjust it to x that is what i am doing with this logic so let me just save it and the name i have given is uh, synchronize synchronize i'll just simulate it like the thing is i want to check whether x and y are synchronizing or coming to the settling down to the same value at every posit or, or not so that is what i'm checking now so it's running zoom to fit so i just maximize it let us check you can see her i'll just see here this is a posit this is a posit x and value is zero here it is changing here the x value you can, you can see here the x value and y value are changed but because the next posit is not not at appeared whenever the next posit of the clock appears again you see that x and y are synchronized again there is some value changes but whenever you have a positive edge the value is made sure that x and value uh, x and y value are synchronized synchronized uh, next posit is uh, here synchronized already next posit is here synchronized you take any value of the posit of the clock x and y value is getting synchronized so this is a task uh, that we implemented using forever statement let me con come to the conclusion of the loop statements now so before that i close it i hope there are no doubts so here before i proceed to the next uh, fundamentals uh, so let me just uh, come to some conclusions the conclusion is you have four loop statements while for repeat forever forever have less features because it will executes forever compared to this repeat statement has one additional features for example using repeat can you act as a forever definitely you give very large number you give 1 lakh 1 lakh times repeat statement should execute so this can repeat can do what forever can do but can forever do what repeat can do no so this can do whatever forever can do but this can can forever do what repeat can do no it is not possible so repeat statement loop statement has a, has an edge over forever okay but why if this is a case why verilog has provided with forever because it will make you easy see some some uh, things some logic needs you to execute something for forever directly you use forever why you should scratch your head like how many number of times i want to execute the repeat statement so let, let us not worry rather than giving big number just give it as forever that's it now can these two have an edge or for loop or while loop or these two have an edge or this two these two things see i can make forever to execute infinite times i will set the condition such that that condition never satisfies if condition is never satisfying 
or it, it is a very big number I, I can say for loop right condition is set such that set for large execution number of times log execution number then this for statements also will execute for forever or more number of times that can also be said whatever repeat and forever does for can do it for has an edge over these two things now I let me come to while and for which is better I can see these two things are like uh, you know uh, equals right these two things like equals Godzilla and Kong right so both are equally good in their respects right see these while while executes until the condition is true for also execute until the condition is true what for does is it will initialize the value it has a, some control variable within it whereas while will have only the condition check within that uh, statement when it starts the control signal will be having within this statement that you should define initialize will happen outside this while loop so only this is a change so these two things are like titans you know they are equals i can say fine so whichever is uh, favorable for you whichever you feel comfortable that you can use between these two things while and for okay and traditionally or somewhere um, you know occasionally you may feel that repeat and forever will uh, achieve or will uh, suffice my need so in that case also i can use the repeat and forever statements so these are the loop statements in verilog for you okay so that's it for today's session so in the next session we, we are learning with sequential and parallel blocks named blocks nested blocks disable blocks all those things and uh, other uh, after the next session we'll be having the last session that is the session on traffic light controller design which is like a um, which is like a project level but i can say it as a a case study okay it's a case study you will be having a very big very log code we will analyze it we use a state diagram there Millet's and Moore's state diagram and we, st we shall try to write a very log code there so each and every bit of that particular thing also I'll be explaining and most importantly I'll be showing all those things simulations live simulations I'm showing okay so this will help you to take up any of the project of your uh, wish okay so I'm telling you with a lot of confidence that after the traffic light controller case study you will be having that confidence to take up execute the projects using very low code okay so that's it for today so if you have any doubts please come up in the chat, google chat box